Hello YouTube, Sidekick here today in my trusty AV-8B Harrier for a video about, um, well, let's call it real-time attack planning. Uh, we're going to talk about the nine-line message and how to read one and use one. And then we're going to talk about how to use the uh, pop-up planning tools from my previous videos uh, about planning a pop-up attack. And lastly, uh, we're going to combine that with information that we talked about in my video about countering Cold War um, forward edge of battle area threats. Now, that original video focused on the A-10, uh, but the Harrier, at least in its original configuration, was intended to operate in more or less the same environment as the A-10. So, we'll probably use about the same tactics that I talked about uh, in that video here today. So, we're going to assume that it's sometime in the early 80s. We're flying a Harrier in support of ground troops that are holding the Syrian-Israeli ceasefire line on the Golan Heights. Uh, that are under attack by Syrian forces. I won't try and figure out a backstory that makes that work, but that's what we're doing. Uh, so, we're flying a Harrier aimed with Mark 20 rock eyes. We aren't using a T-Pod, and we are facing a threat that would have been typical of the Soviet doctrine of that time, say the early 1980s. So even though the cockpit in the Harrier is a bit more modern than that, we're going to operate like we were flying in the 1980s. We'll assume that we have been tasked to take off and take up station some miles back from the forward edge of battle area and to contract uh, and to contact a forward air controller, um, call sign Desperado, when we're on station. Uh, that forward air controller will provide a close air support tasking in real time. To do this, he will use something called a nine-line message format. The idea of the nine-line message is to basically reduce the standard close air support instructions to a pro forma uh, so that they are always transmitted in the same order and it's an order which is highly abbreviated and reduced to the bare necessities so that it can be transmitted efficiently by radio. Here's the nine line format. One, initial point. Two, heading. Three, distance. So if you put those three together, they basically amount to the forward air controller basically talking you directly onto the target by specifying exactly where you should start, what direction you should head, and how far you should fly in that uh, direction. Line four is elevation, and five is description, and then six is actually target location. So note that the target location is actually quite far down the list. This may seem odd, but actually it points out that the format was probably developed kind of with the assumption that the forward air controller would direct not only the target, but the attack itself. So a full nine line will actually tell you exactly how to fly your attack, and then where to look, the elevation, and, and what to look for, the target description. And then the target location in this case could actually also be presented just as a reference to some obvious terrain feature. So if you think about it, this is a very sensible way of directing an aircraft onto a target in the days before digital uh, onboard targeting systems, the pilots would have needed to be talked onto the target once they were pointed at it from their initial point. Now, though I suspect it's much more usual for targets these days to be specified using a good reference or lat long coordinates, and then leave the pilot to choose his own detailed route in and out using his own onboard navigation and designation tools. So the last three lines of the nine line are uh, mark type which indicates how the target will be marked for the pilot, usually with smoke or laser designation. The eighth line indicates the nearest location of friendly forces to ensure uh, against friendly fire mistakes. And nine, uh, the ninth line finally specifies the egress route that should be taken. And this is pretty much included essentially, I think, to provide uh, airspace deconfliction because the FAC may be managing multiple assets and there may be neighboring uh, forward air controllers that are also managing airspace, and so they need to make sure that they stay out of each other's way. Okay, so once we're on station, uh, we would uh, dial up the radio for uh, the FAC, and we would check in, uh, sounding something like this. Desperado, this is Hawk 1 on station with one AV-8B armed with eight Mark 20 rock eyes and 30 minutes of playtime. The fact would probably come back, tell us to stand by, that he would have something for us momentarily, and then would come back 
with Hawk 1, this is Desperado, 9 line, prepare to copy. We would come back with Hawk 1, ready to copy. And the fact would say something like 9 line, 1 to 3, NA, 3036, SA9, platoon minus, 2 vehicles. North 331026, East 355134, South of Two Triangle Woods, Bridge Over Stream. Done. 3,000 meters west, behind border fence, egressed northwest. Read back. We would come back with Hawk 1, 9 line. Location North 331026 East 355134. Desperado would respond. Desperado good read back. Report when ready for remarks. He would say Hawk 1 ready for remarks. And he would then give us his remarks. Something like Desperado. Elements of enemy motor rifle regiment attacking border defenses. Rotary wing assets are on the way. Commander's intent is to suppress IR SAMs before they arrive. Enemy air defense in the area. 1ZSU-23-4, 1,000 meters southwest. And 1ZSU-23-4, 1,000 meters northwest of target. Possible SA-9, 3,000 meters east of target. Suggest approach from south or southeast. Cleared for Mark 20s. Any questions? And we would say Hawk 1, no questions. Okay, so there's actually been a few things going on in the background here, but let's just first get the nine line target location into our navigation system. So we're going to hit data. Uh, then we're going to hit 77, and that will bring up the, add a new waypoint, which is going to be waypoint 4, and then we're going to start putting in the data. We're going to start with the elevation, and then we're going to go to position, and when we do position, we start with uh, the north uh, the long latitude first, and just checking it here. We hit north, and then we hit the north coordinates, all six of them. Enter. Now we have to hit the uh, longitude coordinates, so they're going to be east. Put them in. You gotta remember to start with the leading zero. Oops, wrong. Uh, clear that. Checking my notes here. All right, clear that. Let's try that again. East. Zero. Three. Five. Okay, so now we have the coordinates in, and we can actually see the target there on the screen. And it's off, uh, it's a little bit behind us now, off to the right Caution. here, so Caution. we have to turn around. And off the autopilot here. We're going to have to turn around and uh, start thinking about how to approach that target. So let's talk about some of the things that have been going on. You may have noticed that the radar warning receiver has been beeping at us periodically. There is clearly uh, a SAM radar, uh, it's a fire can radar out there. It's probably uh, an SA-6 site. So we're going to have to do this attack with a low-level ingress. We need to think about that. As well, we need to think about the uh, instructions in the 9-line, including uh, the comments about the other um, any aircraft hazards. So first of all, we're just getting ourselves set up. Uh, now we have two vehicles that we want to hit, so we're going to give a pattern of four Mark 20s with 50 meter spacing. Now we know they're out there somewhere. This one, actually, you can see when we were flying by, you can see there is some smoke on the horizon out there. Uh, that actually seems to be in the target area if we take a look at our map and sort of cross-reference it from what we can see. So, let's, so there's the Sea of Galilee coming up on our left front. By these clouds, we should be able to look back and actually see the target area. And now we want to start planning our attack and figure out, we essentially, uh, if we're going to come in from the south or southeast, it means we're going to come in starting from the Sea of Galilee, probably. That's going to be where we start our run from. 
Now we're going to want to get down to low level by the far side of the lake. Taking a look here. You can see on the screen, back somewhere there, yeah, we can see some smoke on the horizon. That's where the target is. Now if we look at the Sea of Galilee, we can actually see, look at the ground, look at the map, see that there's some uh, low ground, some gullies that kind of run from uh, the Sea of Galilee up towards the target. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to plan to start at the, uh, to get down to low level caution, on the far side. Caution. Uh, and then we're just getting the autopilot off there again. And then we're just going to drop down into one of those gullies. We're going to aim at the target, and then we're going to use our pop-up card to pick when we're going to aim off and when we're going to pop up so we can roll in on the target. So let's get the pop-up card out. Now the thing we're going to want to do, now since we know what we know about the uh, other air defenses, we know that there are some uh, ZSU-23 4s in the area, so we're going to want to pop fairly high uh, and drop the rock eyes from a decent distance so we don't get down into the AAA. But we are also going to want to make sure that we flare the whole way because we've got lots of IR SAMs around. And then we're going to want to get down again because we have a limited amount of time we can spend up high uh, to avoid that SA-6 getting a lock on. So now that's the plan. Okay, in order to avoid the Shilkas, we want to use a fairly high pop-up. We'll use 10,000 feet. Let's use the medium uh, section of the card. So we're going to aim off when we're 7.2 nautical miles from the target, and then we're going to pull up when we're 4.5. Okay, if you want to know more about how we came up with that pop-up card, you can look at my earlier videos about pop-up planning. So we're just about to the point where we got to turn in and aim for one of those gullies on the far side of the Sea of Galilee. Do some final checks to make sure that we have uh, our armament set up properly. Everything's looking good. Yeah, that'll be one of those gullies right at the end. Let's get ourselves turned in and aimed on. Okay, time to finish the fencing in. We're going to designate waypoint 4 as the target. Just check to make sure everything's good, then we're going to master arm on. Now we're going to owe Desperado a radio call here. Let's take a look. So we're traveling 500 knots, a little bit more than 480, which would be 8 nautical miles a minute. So probably by the time we reach the corner, we'll be at a little bit more than 2 minutes out. So we will give him a call at that point and let them know how far away we are. So we're getting down. We're going to hang a left as the gully hangs a left up ahead there. Keep getting down low. And once we make the turn, we're just going to aim directly at the target and start monitoring the distance so that we can uh, aim off at 7.2, pull up at 4.5. Desperado, Hawk 1, 2 minutes. Keep turning until we are pointed directly at our target. Here comes the target. And so now we're on target. Uh, get us an air to ground mode. Once again, checking that the master arm is on. All right, we're ready to go. Just counting down the distance. There's seven nautical miles to go. nice and low, keeping the speed fairly high. We'll push it to the limit as soon as we turn the, do the turn off here. And for the smoke on the horizon. Ten miles out. Turnoff point's going to be just over this ridge. I can see the smoke now to the left. Pull. Here comes the turn. Pull up, pull up. Desperado Hawk 1 in from the southeast. Okay, keep it low, keep it fast. Watching for that 4.5. fence 
And time to go up. Smoke to the left. That must be where the engagement is. Okay, we're hearing that F uh, fire can radar again, so we don't want to be up too high. Looking for that triangle wood. Okay, those are the uh, Shilka radars. There's the target. Okay, there we see the woods, the two triangles. That's good. That's our target right there. Stay on the target. Flaring, flaring. One missile missed. Bomb's gone. Pull out. Okay, there's a little bit of AAA. Not too much, though. Second missile one. Also missed. Looks like we've got both targets. A little bit more AAA coming up there, but we're managing to evade. Keep flaring. Oh, there comes another missile from that other IR SAM that the mine line mentioned. Time to get down, time to get out of here. It also got decoyed by the Right, a successful pop-up mission based on a nine line message. Hopefully that is something that is helpful. If you enjoyed the video, please do like and subscribe to the channel for lots more of this kind of content. Now this is going to be a sidekick. Sign up.